The Alabama Crimson Tide have shown total dominance after beating both Louisville and Arkansas State by more than 50 points. In fact, this is the first time since 1925 that Alabama has opened the season with back-to-back 50-point -back games. So, we can therefore conclude Alabama is basically a perfect team this year. Whoa, hold up, not so fast. I'm going to take a closer look at this 2018 Alabama football team and grade each position group fairly so we can come to an accurate conclusion of how well this team is performing so far this season. Running backs. Against Arkansas State, Najee Harris, arguably Alabama's greatest running back talent on the team, carried the ball 13 times for 135 yards and a touchdown. Alabama's senior running back, Damian Harris, had a reliable 61 yards with 12 touches. So far, the Alabama rushing attack has accumulated 500 yards, despite the inconsistent performance of the offensive line. Bottom line, Alabama has the most talented and deepest group of running backs with Najee Harris, Damian Harris, Josh Jacobs, and Brian Robinson leading the way. Overall grade, A. Quarterbacks. Alabama appears to have the best quarterback room in the nation, with Heisman favorite Tua Tungavailoa leading the aerial attack, while also possessing the most experienced backup in the league, Jalen Hurts. Tua appears to be unstoppable as the most efficient quarterback in the league. So far, Tungavailoa has gone 25 of 35 for 455 yards passing at a 71.4% completion rate, six touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Tua is averaging a mind-blowing one touchdown for every six pass attempts. Therefore, as you would expect, his quarterback rating is the best in the country at over 237. In Tua's most recent game, he continued to validate his hype completing 13 of 19 passes for 228 yards, four touchdowns, and no picks. However, Jalen Hurts has also seen significant playtime this year and had a surprisingly great performance in week two, completing seven of nine passes for 93 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and rushed for 32 yards. This is perhaps the most talented position group for the Crimson Tide and deserves no other grade but a solid A+. Special Teams Other than the return game, there just isn't much that is special about the Alabama Special Teams Unit so far. Senior transfer place kicker Austin Jones missed two extra points and has missed three extra points in two games. The good news, Nick Saban benched Austin Jones for talented freshman kicker Joseph Bulovas, who went on to make all five of his extra points along with a 40-yard field goal. Only time will tell if the young Bulovas will remain consistent. However, Bama's special teams issues don't end there. Freshman punter Skylar DeLong hasn't had a punt go further than 39 yards all year. DeLong is also taken far too long to get his punts off. However, Skylar DeLong has unbelievable punts in practice and an even stronger leg than the irreplaceable J.K. Scott. Therefore, it's only a matter of game experience and time before Alabama's punting problems are a thing of the past. Overall grade, D. Receivers. Just as Alabama's quarterback and running back positions, the receiving core is, in my honest opinion, the best in the country. So far, nine different receivers have been successfully targeted. It wasn't so long ago that Alabama's passing attack solely focused on one guy, whether that was Calvin Ridley, Amari Cooper, or Julio Jones. 
But with Tua driving the bus, things are very, very different. So far, Alabama's receiving core has amassed 618 yards on just 37 receptions for eight passing touchdowns. This brings the average to an explosive 16.7 yards per pass. With such diversity, we are even witnessing the Alabama tight ends being effective weapons in the passing game. Whether it's Devonta Smith, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Jalen Waddle, or even tight end Irv Smith Jr., the Alabama receivers are all talented enough on any given play to take it to the house. Overall grade, A+. Offensive line. With the Alabama passing and rushing attack being so dominant, one would assume the offensive line is performing on an equal level. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case. Alabama's offensive line is, in fact, among the most talented in the country, but has shown several areas of concern. This O-line needs to improve communication, physicality, and overall execution. Specifically, they need to be pushing up into the second level in the run game and sometimes double teams are sloppy in pass protection. Overall, this offensive line is capable of so much more and I have no worries that coach Brent Key will work out the issues before Alabama faces an opponent that can compete in the trenches. Fans shouldn't be too worried about the offensive line as it's always been a trademark of Alabama teams for the O-line to start out slowly before they gel as a unit several games into the season. Overall grade, C+. Defensive line. The Alabama defensive front is on track to becoming one of the best in the nation as the season progresses. However, we can't ignore that Arkansas State just put up 173 yards rushing on 31 attempts against the Alabama D-line. However, to put this into perspective, most of these rushing yards came against the Alabama backups. This Alabama front consists of Quinnen Williams at nose guard with Isaiah Bugs and Raquan Davis on either side. On a positive note, we saw a promising performance from second string defensive tackle LeBrian Ray. However, with Quinnen Williams receiving SEC honors in week one and Isaiah Bugg's consistent performances combined with Raquan Davis's freak size and athleticism, all this group needs is some help from the guys behind them, the Alabama linebackers. Overall grade, B minus. Linebackers. This has to be the most talented position group on the Alabama defense that is not living up to expectations. With sheer talent alone, they have given, quote, good enough performances, but must ultimately come together for this Alabama defense to be your typical Nick Saban elite unit. Overall, we've seen too many missed tackles and with Mac Wilson handling calls, too much miscommunication. The leader of a defense is the middle linebacker that communicates the sideline calls and ensures everyone is in the right position to make the best play. I'm talking about guys like Reuben Foster, CJ Mosley, and Dante Hightower. So far, Saban has called upon Mac Wilson to take over as the leader. And while Mac Wilson is among the most talented players in the country, his debut at running the front seven has been less than optimal. Given this, I suspect that the more cerebral Dylan Moses will be handed the leadership role if we don't see Mac Wilson get it together in the communication. With all of that said, expect this linebacker group to start consistently performing up to their talent levels. Also, remember that Nick Saban has been using these initial games to play everyone on the depth chart to build depth for the inevitable injuries that occur during the season. As such, as these young guns learn under live fire, mistakes will be made. However, as always, it will come together and 
pay off when it counts against the tougher SEC opponents on the horizon. Overall grade, C. Defensive backs, aka secondary. It's evident the secondary is still meshing together and filling each other out, but they continue to make progress. Overall, I've been pleased with this extremely young but talented Alabama secondary. That said, in the future, they need to get off blocks better, to get to the football faster, get lined up more quickly, be more decisive, be more comfortable with checks and play calls, and overall, wrap up better on tackles. We've had plenty of exceptional individual efforts, such as pick sixes, interceptions, batted balls, and absolutely insane speed and range with our safeties, Deontay Thompson and Xavier McKinney. Thompson, our free safety, has been all over the field and led the team in tackles two weeks in a row. His partner in crime, Xavier McKinney, definitely picked his game up in week two, and we also saw two different third string defensive backs, Josh Job and Daniel Wright, perform like all-stars when inserted last week. I have high expectations from the secondary based on the level of talent they possess as the season progresses, and they certainly have the work cut out for them against SEC opener Ole Miss. The Alabama secondary will have to prove their mettle against Ole Miss's all-star quarterback, Tamu, while he throws to three NFL caliber receivers. Overall grade, A-. So to sum up, Alabama's offense is second to none at every position group, including the offensive line. However, the only issue with the offense is that offensive line needs to continue to gel as a unit. The Alabama defense is as talented as any other Nick Saban defense and is more talented overall than many of the Tide's former defenses. However, due to the youth and lack of leadership, this year's Alabama defense will need more time than usual to turn into a prototypical elite Saban defense. The Tide special teams have some good and bad as I explained above. The kicking game seems to be back on point while the punting game is going to need more time to develop. Luckily, to balance things out, Alabama has elite punt returners in Jalen Waddell and Joshua Jacobs. All in all, while they still have some work to do, Alabama is still considered the unanimous best team in the country. Now, that's my personal opinion of where Alabama sits heading into week three. However, I'm interested in where you guys think Alabama currently stands and are there any weaknesses that you think Coach Saban and this 2018 Alabama football team cannot overcome? Well guys, thanks for watching and until next time, take care.